All right, so I'm coming back with a quick video because something has caught my attention while I was Googling Switch Manager at one stage. So what I come across was a Reddit post, and thank you, Nico282, for well advertising my um, integration. It's very much appreciated. But I noticed in the comments um, one person was doing it like I was in Node Red and um, <clears throat> making their own program or own flow to emulate multiple presses for a button that doesn't natively support it. So I thought yeah, this is a um, challenge I accept and I believe my integration can do that without having to rely on Node Red. So I did a quick test and yeah. In the end, the result seems to be the same. So I want to quickly show you guys how you can um, create a switch that doesn't natively support uh, two times press, three times press, and so on, and emulate it instead. It's just using by the actions flow. So we'll go back to the index of the switch manager. And from the last video, I created that test uh, Philips Hue. So we'll use that as the guinea pig. And simply to logically think about how you would do this. So you got to press, but no press times two or anything. Let's go in and start trying to make it so it acts like that virtually. So what we would do to start with is go into variables. And depending on how many buttons you want to do this for, if you want to do it for each one or just one, just set the variables for them. So I'm going to do button one, and we'll equal it to zero. And I'll do the same for the other buttons, just so you get an idea. Three, four. So that would be button one, button two, button three, and button four. So... Without, we could do it in a net setting these variables, but we'll do it in press. And it's better for the flow anyway. Now, first of all, we want to make sure you change your mode to restart. That's important because it means every time this button is pressed, it's going to restart this um, flow. First thing we're going to do, call service, switch manager, set switch variable. And we'll do... Again, data dot switch underscore ID. So we're targeting the same switch. And then we go to variables. And this is button one. So we're going to do button one underscore equals assign it. And we're going to do a increment on the um, number. So it would be data dot variables dot um what was it called button underscore one plus one all right so we'll save that and as you'll see now if i press the top button now click refresh go to variables it will now equal one. I'm going to press it three more times so you can get an idea of what's happening. And three. Do a refresh. And it's now up to number four. So that's just a generic increment. Next, we can go in and change set an action. And we're going to do, uh, what would we do? A choose. Now, in this choose, we've got our options. Now, for option, we can set, the default would be the last button. So if you've done it more than four times or how many you choose as the maximum amount, you would put it as a default. But what I'll do here, we'll go add action and we'll do a template condition. And we're going to just say data dot variables dot button Oops, button one equals one. So this means it's been pressed one time. Now it's always going to go to one and not zero because we're setting the switch variable and increment, uh, which is always going to be one before it gets to the conditions. 
Um, I'll do a quick action. Pull service. I'm going to do a light toggle. And I'll do that for the kitchen. All right. Now let's do, I'll do three all up. So we'll add another option. Add condition. And we'll do template. Data dot variables button underscore one equals two. So it's been pushed two times. Um, add condition, full service, uh, light dot toggle. I'm going to do this as a family room. Family room names. And last one, add option. And this time I am going to do template data dot variables dot button underscore one is above two. This means that if it's pressed more than three times, it's always going to go to this action. Change it to how you want your logic to apply to your switch, but for me, I think that's suitable. Otherwise, you can also do add default action, which will be the same as this regardless. Uh, for this one, we're going to do full service light dot toggle. And I'm going to choose uh, lounge room, living room. Living room main. All right. So now we got those conditions. It will pick one based on how many times the switch is set, but we're not done yet. First of all, we want to add an action and do wait for time pass. Now, one second should suffice. Um, and what we'll do, we are going to put it up one. So reorder. Exit. So. The flow as it is now, we got set switch variable, increment it by one, wait for one second, and then we'll execute the action. Now we wait for one second because there's a possibility of another press coming in to calculate as two presses or three. We don't want this code to execute until it's sure of how many times you press the button. Because it's in mode restart, if it's in the middle of this delay, it's going to go back up here and not come down here at all. So it goes back up, sets the switch variable, another increment, wait for another second. If another push comes in, all right, we'll go back up, wait a second, then we'll go down and choose the action. Lastly, we want to make sure that switch variable is set back to zero. So switch variables, switch ID again, we'll do switch um sorry data dot switch data dot switch underscore id and variables button underscore one back to zero so once it's done its action it goes back to zero so that way when it increments again it's going to be one then two then three execute its action back to zero that's kind of pretty much the flow of everything. And that should be enough to have it all going as planned. So I'll save that. One thing you have to realize is when you set your variables, they're not saved. So when you restart Home Assistant, they it will go back to what you saved it as. But because the variables has already been changed to four, it will save that if you click save afterwards. So whatever's in the variables in here will save once you click save. But if you never click save then and you reboot or restart Home Assistant, then it'll go back to its default. For this case, I'm going to change that back to zero so we have a clean slate. Update, save. Now let's see and test. And you might want to play around with the delay. Maybe it's a bit too long the one second, but you have to also understand when you have a native button that does uh, press three or four, they have their own kind of mechanic to delay in it just to know that someone's pressing two times or three times. So this is a natural way that the um, native switches work as well. 
but you might want to play around with that. Maybe maybe it'll be, work better for you at uh, 500 milliseconds or so on. If you have a switch that has t- two times already and one and you want the possibility of three, you can still do that. You probably have to add a little bit more logic and go into your press times two and increment by two in your switch variables. Um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to use the one press, and I think Philips Hue is a good um, example for that. So I'm going to go into Home Assistant. I'm going to press one time, and you can see the kitchen light turned on, which we set as the first one. I'm going to press two times, and I'm going to put it closer to the laptop so you can hear it. And it turns on the um, family room, dining room, whatever you want to call it in this house. And three times. And it turns on the living room. I'm going to press it two times. And so on. So this has pretty much emulated a device to support multiple presses that doesn't support it, um, support it natively. Three times and that one turns off. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit better understanding of what you can do, especially with the switch variables. It makes it a lot easier not having to create extra entities and setting them and so on. Now I did cut the video prematurely because I did want to show one more thing because we did have the button two and button three and button four also. If you want to make it quick and easy, once you've set all these, just remember you can go into YAML editor, highlight it all, copy, go into button two, then paste. And again, remember to set the remote to reset. Um, should be in press, so we'll remove that. Put it in press. Then when you go uh, again back to restart. Then when you go into visual editor, it's all there. But just remember, when you go in, just change button one wherever you find it to button two. And actually, it's quicker copy. Then it highlights where button one is, so you know that you kind of covered all grounds. Button two, button two, and button two. So we'll go back to the visual editor. And you can see everything's button two now. Then do the same for three and four. I just thought I'd quickly um, touch on that because it might be probably all typing it out again. Um, but I just want you guys to realize there's a YAML editor there that you can copy and paste. So sorry about that. Again, if you like it, click like subscribe, do what you like. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.